Okay, today it's just a video tutorial. I'm going to show you something I've discovered by accident uh, using Photoshop. Um, it's quite useful actually uh, when you start thinking about the amount of tools and elements you may be using on different layers. Um, this is a layer effect that I found. Um, I'm going to show you the old fashioned way. I've found a picture of myself, and the reason I'm using it is because it's got this background that has connected edges both sides. You may want to put some images or text in the background cutting past behind my head. Okay. One thing you may want to do is to do it on multiple layers. Okay. I'm going to show you what happens when you do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to first create a marquee, make sure that the feather of the marquee is set for one pixel so it has a softer edge next to the edge I have it already. I'm just going to basically click quickly around trying to follow as close as possible to the edge of the actual body and head. I'm going to forget the earring. I'm just going to skip the earring. But you can, as I said, recreate certain parts of the shape as you will. If you ever need to add anything to a marquee, you just use your uh, shift and if you want to take it away you just add your alt key and it gives you the option to take elements away from your marquee once you've created it and then I'm just going to quickly zip around my egg shape head if you want to know how I can quickly move around the picture and it doesn't show you on this video by showing you the key that I'm using I'm just pressing down the space bar when I get to the edge of the picture and it allows me to drag the image to a new position and I can carry on clicking with my marquee tool like so carry on, nearly finished you may have a JPEG and you want to add something in the background of an image and uh, leave the actual JPEG quality without having a, a torn edge around the actual thing you're trying to cut out and this is the best way of doing it because you don't want to try and take things away from each other and then figure out you've got a ragged edge or a rough edge when you've recompressed it so basically I've created a marquee just because I'm going to show you the proper way in a minute I'm just going to create that as a, a working path Okay, like so. I'm just going to create it back into a marquee again, back to my layers. What we normally do, we'd make a new layer. And just here, there's this option it says create masking layer, which does this. And you can see on the little thumbnail, it's black and white, which basically means if I'll just show you. I'm going to create uh, get some yellow, my favourite colour. Okay. I'm going to enlarge my brush. If I just paint, you notice. Oops. <laughs> Helps if you're on the right layer. So I'm going to go back to there. You have to make sure you click on this section here. What I'm going to do is just paint. Make sure I've got some white and yellow as well. Ooh, I don't think. Okay. You notice it goes behind my. Uh, my head, okay. Obviously, my head's masked, okay. One thing you'll notice though is if you want to start moving this around, it moves the mask around as well. Yeah, first point you need to remember is this little lock key there. So you just click off that, and that allows you to then move your uh, element without moving your mask, okay. What happens if you you say you want to have that little bit of colour in the background, but then also want to add some text? You click on your text option Oops. just making something silly have to resize that select it make it a little bit bigger so we can see 
What you notice is it's in front of my uh, head. I want it behind the head, yeah, which is not what we want. Okay, just make it pure white so you can see it as well. Okay, so how do I get it so it's behind? What we'd have to do, obviously, is to create a new layer. Go to my paths. Go back to my, I should go back to there. Create a clipping mask. Yeah, you notice again, same issue. I can now do this. Making sure I select my letters. I can move that around my head so I can have it wherever I want to. So you can have it sitting behind there if you want to. Okay. What you'll notice is you've got several different masks and several different clips. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to do it a quick and easy way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just make some layers. First one I'm going to just put some paint on again. Like so. Yeah. Next one I'm going to put some text on it like I did before. Make sure it's white as I did before. Oops, rolls. Put it there. I don't need any more layers actually. Let's just try and do it with two. What we can do now is if I make a, a group, I can put these two objects inside the group. So let's say mask group. Okay. Close it. Make sure the mask is selected. I mean the group selected. And now what you can do is actually make a clipping mask to the group. So then you can unclip it. Okay, get your thing. And now, oops, actually select your actual group and let me mask. You can move both objects at the same time just in case you need to realign them. Okay, very slightly. Notice that's a big problem, you'd have to oversize the uh, paint. But basically you can do both at the same time, but also you can do one at a time. So you have to readjust that slightly like that. And then you can put that over there like that. And you can add extra elements as well. So for instance if I now create that I can add a new section to the uh, layer. And as long as everything's inside the actual group, I can even add extra text. This is fantastic. Like so, yeah, that allows me to move this around. And it's all done with the same mask, which is the masking group. Okay, like so. All right. That's one way of solving a problem having to remake multiple masks at the same time. Okay, simple and easy.